Hello and welcome to this video on TLS security policies for AWS IoT Core. TLS security policies are a new feature in IoT Core that introduces support for Transport Layer Security version 1.3. My name is Greg Breen and I'm an IoT Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. In this video, I'm going to explain what AWS IoT Core TLS security policies are. We'll cover the architecture of the feature and how it's integrated into IoT Core. And I'll walk you through how to apply these settings to all of the different types of domains supported by IoT Core. Your default device data endpoint, your configurable endpoints, and your custom domains. We'll be diving into the details of TLS security policies and how they apply to IoT Core endpoints and domains. It's therefore helpful if you're already somewhat familiar with TLS, configurable endpoints, custom domains, and the AWS console and command line interface. TLS security policies are a concept added to IoT Core that allow you to assign the supported TLS version or versions for each of your IoT Core endpoints or domains. At the time of this video being recorded, and depending on your selected AWS region, there can be up to five TLS security policies to choose from. Please consult the developer guide for full details on the TCP ports and Cypher suites supported by each policy. The two legacy policies are only available in selected regions and should not be used for new designs. Therefore, you will generally assign your endpoints to be one of three possibilities, both TLS 1.2 and 1.3, or TLS 1.3 only, or TLS 1.2 only. Since these policies can be assigned independently to each of your IoT Core endpoints and domains, and IoT Core allows you to create your own configurable endpoints and custom domains, you have great flexibility in managing a heterogeneous fleet of devices, logically separating devices that have different security posture. This architecture diagram shows the three types of domains supported by IoT Core. The default Amazon Trust Services domain endpoint provisioned with every account and region, configurable endpoints with AWS managed domains, and custom domains provisioned with their own certificate. For all three types of domain endpoints, you can assign a TLS security policy independently. If you have multiple configurable endpoints or multiple custom domains, each has an independent TLS security policy. Let's now walk through how to assign the TLS security policy for the default Amazon Trust Services device data endpoint. We begin with the AWS IoT console shown here on the left and an Ubuntu terminal shown on the right. We'll use OpenSSL in this terminal to test the TLS version of our endpoints. We select Settings. We now have the ability to select the security policy for the device data endpoint. If your endpoint existed before the security policy feature and you've never set a policy, then this setting will be blank. In that case, your endpoint defaults to TLS 1.2 only. In my case, I've previously set the policy on this endpoint and the current value is TLS 1.2 only. Using OpenSSL, we try to connect to the device data endpoint using TLS version 1.2. Connection succeeds. The server certificate is returned with the expected issuer. The TLS version and Cypher suite is reported. Now we try to connect with TLS 1.3. In this case, we're unsuccessful. No certificate is returned and the TLS version and Cypher suite are blank. In this region, we have five security policies to select from, including the two legacy policies. We select the policy that enables both TLS 1.2 and 1.3. Policy changes can take some time to come into effect. After a delay of a few minutes, we repeat the earlier OpenSSL commands. 
we confirm that the endpoint still supports TLS 1.2 and confirm that it also now supports TLS 1.3. Let's now turn our attention to assigning the TLS security policy for a configurable endpoint with an AWS managed domain. We return to the AWS IoT console and create a domain configuration. We start by naming the domain configuration. We could configure an authorizer or custom domain settings, but we elect not to in this case. We're creating an endpoint that is an AWS managed domain with standard authorization. Scrolling down, we find the TLS security policy setting. It's contained within the custom domain settings, even though we're creating an AWS managed domain. We select the desired policy. In this case, I'll select TLS 1.3 only and create the domain configuration. As we saw before, it can take several minutes for the TLS security policy to apply. After a delay of a few minutes, we can use OpenSSL to try to connect using TLS 1.2. As expected, we're unsuccessful. Now we try to connect using TLS 1.3, and as expected, we succeed. The server certificate is returned, and the TLS version and Cypher suite is reported. Let's finish by assigning a TLS security policy to a custom domain. As highlighted in the Ubuntu terminal, I've created a temporary domain to use in this section. This domain has a CNAME record, aliasing it to the AWS managed domain we created in the previous section. We can see this domain by performing a ping. As you may recall, that AWS managed domain had a security policy that assigned it to TLS 1.3 only. What you're about to see is that if we create a custom domain, it won't inherit the TLS security policy. Instead, it will have a fully independent TLS security policy. We'll create the custom domain with a TLS 1.2 only policy to illustrate the point. Moving to the AWS IoT console, we create a new domain configuration. We give it a name in the usual way and we again elect not to configure an authorizer. We set the custom domain name, set the security policy to TLS 1.2 only select an appropriate certificate from AWS Certificate Manager and then create the domain configuration. After a short delay, we can use OpenSSL to try to connect using TLS 1.2. As expected, we're successful. We can try again, but this time with TLS 1.3 and as expected, we're unsuccessful. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please ask them at repost.aws where you can get help from our subject matter experts and the wider AWS community. I may see you there.